and courts, principles. Okay, um, not too much. Our maths testing is all completed. Um, Thursday and I will have our preschool graduation. Just kind of winding down the year. Here. Our track week today was canceled, so that will be on Wednesday. It's going to be the last big event for the kids. Um, all field trips have been completed and were successful, so now it's just those last few things before the end of the year. Any questions from Mary? When will the maps test results come out? We get those almost right away. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, I don't know, usually um, Mrs. Camus will look over all those. And okay. We'll probably get a question on it. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Trader. <coughs> We're also winding down and uh, testing's pretty much complete. The state testing is complete. Uh, Maps testing at uh, this building, 3, 312. We only tested the ninth and 10th graders. We have a couple uh, that were absent during testing that we need to get wrapped up in the next day or two. And then our testing will be complete. Uh, during the past month, I had a lockdown drill here at this building, uh, invited the Madison County Sheriff's Department with their drug dog, and uh, he came along with uh, county officials and city officials, and uh, we conducted about a 30-minute lockdown. It was a good drill. Nothing was found. Uh, and it was a good test for our students to sit for 30 minutes quiet. Uh, it was a good, it was a good drill. Other than that, uh, some spring activities that uh, you might be interested in attending. Tomorrow night is our academic night where we recognize 9 through 12 uh, academic accomplishments and scholarships. Wednesday night is baccalaureate. Both those are at 7 o'clock. Uh, graduation, sac Saturday at 2. Uh, a junior high recognition next Wednesday, I believe it's Wednesday, during 8th period for their academic as well. In our elementary field day is tomorrow afternoon, which you can probably already know. That's all I have, unless you have questions. Do you anticipate more lockdown drills in the future? I usually try to have one during first semester and one during second semester. That's what I mean. drills are monthly. We're running out, correct? I have a few students that I pamper, uh -huh. but for the most part, they're unannounced. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lou. Superintendent's report. In the packet. Uh, the main highlight from the rest Council of School Administrators is personnel. The superintendent is hired by the Board of Education to provide leadership to the district. The superintendent evaluates staffing considerations and needs and is responsible for recommending and hire to the Board of Education for approval. The Board of Education is responsible for the evaluation of the superintendent, and the superintendent is responsible for the evaluation of all district employees. Student staffing accomplishments were already read. Our school improvement update, May 19th, will be the last day of school. Our students will be dismissed at noon. Teachers will be working on grades, report cards, in their classrooms. On May 28th, <coughs> 20th, ESU 8 uh, is going to be facilitating uh, data analysis for continuous school improvement. They're going to be using some Bright Bites data and looking at the advanced ed cycle. May 21st is technology training for our teachers, and May 22nd, teachers will be checking out and working on updating their curriculum binders. Um, strategic planning, May 20th, 2015, that's employee recognition for our retirees, and all board members are encouraged to attend. And then Heritage Bank and Pinnacle Bank fund balances, it was asked uh, by a stakeholder that I read those balances since they don't have access 
to all packet materials. And so I will do that at this time. As of May 1st, uh, the building fund has $516,557.38. As of May 1st, the depreciation fund had $225,866.52. And as of May 1st, the QC Pub fund had $76,022.10. Technology website update, uh, the one-to-one -one update, they have been ordered. Um, the staff technology team, Mr. Luth, is going to take a look at the procedure handbook that is on the agenda, so I will not discuss that. Um, as already mentioned, that staff training will be on Thursday, May 21st, and the committee is looking for the board to set the student user fee, and they will give you information on that, Mr. Luth will. Uh, SOX, the transition date, is still being discussed. Um, I have seen some of the components of that, and the technology team is reviewing that as well. Not ready yet. Uh, building grounds, transportation update, essential facilities planning, summer project, that's on the agenda. Um, committee minutes for building and grounds, again, they have been verbally requested. Um, they do desire a list of attendees and some discussed topics. Facility challenges, that is on the agenda. Nebraska Association of School Boards update, that open meetings law workshop is pending in June in Norfolk. And then I've also listed some policies that the Nebraska Association of School Boards and Nebraska Council of School Administrators have highlighted as policies to watch with regards to this legislative session. Um, as you can see, Senator Sullivan, she is the chair of the Education Committee. She's got quite a few bills there. Um, a lot of those bills are being held, which means they may come into effect next term. Uh, LB-343, that is in the general file, and you'll look at LB-431, Baker's Law, um, that's already been passed and signed into law. Okay. Any questions? Board members make good Baker's Law, from 40,000 to 100,000. Okay. That's for the bidding process, right? Okay. Thank you, Ms. Williams Fowler. Yes. Is there any reports from uh, board members? Nope. Nope. All right. New business. Discussion, letter A, discussion and action to approve 1 1 technology handbook. Uh, Mr. Luke, it looks like this is yours. I sent you an email. I didn't hear from anyone. I assume you received my email with the attachments. So uh, the, I sat in with the attendance, and not the attendance, <laughs> the one, the technology committee when they put together this handbook, offered my input as well. Basically, what they did was take a look at several different schools' handbooks, procedures. Uh, mixed them together and uh, came up with our own. Uh, all the do's and don'ts of the procedure for the one-to-one -one process that we're going to be going through. And uh, basically what, what, I, what we need you to do is to approve this handbook, like I said <coughs> in my email, because none of this is in the student handbook. <coughs> This is just a one-to-one -one handbook. Uh, the biggest thing that's in there, I also sent you a cost comparison that we gathered from uh, different schools in the area. Our recommendation is that we charge $50 per student per laptop for grades 9 through 12 for the protection plan. Not going into detail, but the handbook explains the protection plan. Uh, as you can see from that list of schools, it ranged from no fees at a couple schools to $50 per student. Uh, some of them had $50 deductible, some of them had $200 deductible. Uh, one school has of $50 per student with a max of $150 per family. 
So basically our recommendation is fifty dollars per student. So I think that's that's where it kind of lies the the handbook itself. There's about eight different members of that group that skimmed it and reviewed it and hope and reviewed it again and so we think it's pretty ready to go. Our plan right now is we will have conduct parent meetings in the fall prior to school starting. Uh, one night for ninth and 10th graders, another night for 11th and 12th graders. And to go through this handbook page by page and uh, along with Mr. Kreppel uh, doing a little demonstration with the laptop itself and the new uh, Windows format that we will be using. The other thing we're going to do for notification is we're in the process of registering students for next fall. They will be taking their class registration sheets home for signatures this week and we will be attaching a short note explaining uh, that one-to-one -one procedure and the, the mandatory meeting, parent and student meeting that they'll have to attend before they get their laptops next fall. And then I'll have it in the paper in early August when we're gearing back up as a reminder. So. You said that those. this is a separate handbook on its own. Will it be added to the student handbook, the regular one? Once, if we can. That's approved. Uh, for the following 16, 17 year, we can. Uh, I just wondered if it was going to be added. It, I mean, any book is charged by the page. This is 16 pages. It's probably, and we will have three signature pages that come back to us. So these pages are easier uh, to handle than the, the little five by eight sheets. Sure, sure. The, uh, the cost of the $50 per student, that's per year, correct? Per year. And would it be if, if a student day is on the free reduced, would that still be assessed? Every student will have that access, but we do have in this handbook an option that uh, if they can or can't afford to pay, number one is the computer will not go home with them. They'll have to check it out in the morning and return it at the end of the day. Or they can work it off for the school at minimum wage. So janitorial work coming in at, at, at minimum wage until the fifty dollars is paid as an option. So we're looking for a motion to approve. I make that motion to approve the handbook. I'm sorry. The fee, did you want to? Yes, I guess. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. The fifty dollars. In, in, in your motion. There's six questions. Yes. So we have a motion to approve the handbook along with the fifty dollar fee for. For the uh, insurance. Is there any other discussion? One thing I might add before you vote. Uh, I think when this thing initially started, we were looking at 712 with uh, the remainder of the computers in the building to be handed down to the 7th and 8th grade. And that is still the plan, but our the committee's line of thinking right now that is that that might not take place until the second semester or maybe the end of the first quarter depending on how we get off and running with this new <coughs> endeavor and and i think since 
Mr. Kreppel proposed to you that whole project, we we didn't allow for bags for those computers for the junior high to be carried to protect them. So that's going to be an additional thing down the road that, that wasn't talked about earlier. It's another reason why we're putting it off. But uh, the 7th and 8th grade was still going to be in-house only. They wasn't leaving the building. And I can't remember if it was during the entire proposal, but the plan right now is to buy them back after that that time is up and just keep locating them for, I think it was for a dollar. to approve changes to the elementary and student handbook on um, the Schrader. Okay, well, we have very few changes. As you know from last month, George told you how one of the outcomes of the title review was that the handbook will now include um, information about our SAT, which is a student assistance team. In <coughs> and what George shared with you last month was the exact same verbiage as going into our handbook. So I'm going to another copy of that for you. So that was probably the biggest change that will be added. Other than that, we just had um, a slight clarification concerning absences and all the other things that will just be main changes, clerical changes. So that's it on changes for the handbook. Thank you, Ms. Schrager. Mm -hmm. um, there's a motion to approve the changes as presented by Ms. Schrager. Make a motion. A second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Schindler? Yes. 